Good evening to all of you. In this video, we wish to ask this question. Are angular momentum and angular velocity always in the same direction? Linear momentum of a particle P is defined as mass of the particle into velocity of the particle. Since mass is positive, velocity and momentum have to be in the same direction. Therefore, we can say the unit vector along P and the unit vector along V must be equal. We wish to ask the same question for angular momentum L and angular velocity omega. Both are vectors and we would like to ask whether L will be equal to L cap will be equal to omega cap always whether this relation holds good always. To understand that, first let us study the uh, basic definition of omega and L. Let us consider the circular motion. The body, let us say there is a particle which is executing circular uh, motion. The path of the particle will be in a plane. The circle will lie in a plane. Now for this uh, circular motion there would be a center we shall call that as C and we define what is known as the axis of rotation. The axis of rotation is a line passing through the center and perpendicular to the plane of motion. So this would be the axis of rotation. Now, we define omega, the magnitude of omega as d theta by dt. It is an infinitesimal angle d theta turned in an infinitesimal time dt. Supposing I draw the radius here and let's say the radius sweeps an angle d theta. The radius is capital R it sweeps an angle d theta, this d theta in a time dt. So, the magnitude of the angular velocity will be d theta by dt. The direction of omega is defined to be axial. So, we will say vector omega is omega k cap. If this is the z axis, let us say, if this is k cap, the direction of omega is omega k cap. Now here in this case, we have assumed the direction to be anti-clockwise sense. So if the body is moving in the anti-clockwise sense, curl your fingers along the direction of motion, the thumb gives the direction of omega. So omega is along k cap. For a clockwise direction, omega would be minus k cap. Let us also see another important relation in a circular motion. If the arc turned is ds, the arc, the arc will nearly be a straight line. The linear velocity v would be ds by dt. ds, r, the arc would be arc upon the radius gives the angle d theta. So ds would be r d theta. So, V would be equal to R into omega. The direction of V continuously changes and it is tangential at every point. The velocity vector would be tangential at every point on the circle. Now let us see angular momentum L. Angular momentum is not defined with an axis as a reference. It is defined with a point as a reference. Of course, we can talk about the component of the angular momentum along an axis. But per se, angular momentum is defined with respect to a reference point. So if you have a particle which is having a momentum P given by mv, if we choose some reference point O, 
and the position vector of that particle is r with respect to the point o then l is r cross p so the direction of l would be perpendicular to r and perpendicular to p in fact it would be perpendicular to the plane formed by r and p in this case r and p are lying on the plane of the board so if we found out the direction of l r point the four fingers in the direction of the first vector curl it towards second vector the thumb outstretched thumb gives the direction of l so l is into the board in this case so let us get back to this uh, circular motion this is the center of the circle and we now let's say the particle is here the velocity is out of the board so mv is out of the board we are choosing a point o on the axis and we wish to find the angular uh, momentum of this particle with respect to this reference point o so we shall draw the radius vector r Uh, the position vector r with respect to o and uh, so this is going to be r cross p the momentum vector is out of the board so r cross p r cross p curl it towards second vector l vector is going to be like that so as you can see omega vector was axial omega vector was this way and l vector is not along the axis therefore in general we can say that the direction of l and omega will not be the same let us see this in more detail what we shall now do is resolve l along the axis and perpendicular to the axis so if this angle is theta if i draw a horizontal here this is this angle would also be theta because this plus this is 90 and this being 90 this plus this is also 90 so this is common so this would be theta so we can now resolve l along the axis the axis we will call it as the z direction and perpendicular to the axis so l i can say is lz plus l perpendicular now what is the magnitude of l the magnitude of l is given by r cross p which is r p into sin of 90 because the momentum vector is out of the board r and the momentum vector make an angle 90 degrees so this is r p and p is nothing but mv so we can say this is mv r that is the magnitude of the angular uh, momentum mvr now what is lz lz would be the component along component of l along the axis which is the opposite side in this triangle so lz is going to be l sin theta or L is M V R, so this will be M V R sine theta. But R sine theta is nothing but the radius of the circle R capital R. So this would be M V capital R. Now V can be written as omega R. So 
this will reduce to m r squared omega or vectorially we can say lz is equal to m r squared omega k cap or this is m r squared omega bar omega vector m r squared is defined as the moment of inertia of the particle about the axis it is the mass of the particle into the square of the perpendicular distance of the particle from the axis so this can be written as i omega so therefore you have vector l is equal to which is equal to lz plus l perpendicular is i omega plus l perpendicular so as you can see l and omega will not be in the same direction as long as l perpendicular exists so that gives us a clue that supposing we had a symmetrical particle here by symmetrical particle we mean another particle at the other end of the diameter yes this particle is executing circular motion so we can draw it at the diameter and let us say at the other end there is another particle of the same mass and having a velocity having a momentum or velocity same as the uh, equal and opposite to the momentum of this body of this of the first particle then if the momentum is into r cross mv will give us a vector l this way now this can be resolved into two components the two horizontal components will cancel both the horizontal components will cancel and l will now become will have a l will now have a direction uh, same as that of angular velocity omega so we can now conclude by saying that the angular momentum and the angular velocity will be in the same direction if the system of particles is symmetric yes if the system of particles is symmetric we can say l is equal to i omega in this case i would be 2 mr square because there are two masses here i was only mr square here it is going to be 2 mr square so there are uh, several examples of uh, symmetric distributions which we come across if you if you have a let us say a, a a sphere if you have a sphere and this is a sphere we have shown and uh, this sphere uh, is symmetric because for every point you can find a symmetrical point at the other end of the diameter when this is rotating so when you a spherical shell you had a spherical shell this would also be symmetric you can have a ring a ring like that it would be if you rotate it about its diameter it's going to be a symmetric distribution of particles similarly a disk if you had a disk that would also yield the same result it's a symmetric distribution you had a cuboid let's say you had a cuboid and there is an axis passing to the center of the cuboid and perpendicular to two of the parallel sides parallel faces this will also be symmetric for instance if you took a point 1 here there would be a point 1 dash here which would be symmetric to 1 as this rotates so in all these cases we can say l is equal to i omega because it is a symmetric distribution in fact if you had a thin rod a thin rod about its center would also be a, treated as a symmetric object 
A thin rod is nothing but an, uh, the, uh, an approximation of a cuboid. A cuboid when made thin becomes a thin, thin rod. Since the cuboid is symmetric, the thin rod would also be symmetric. Now that is uh, another situation in which the angular momentum can be in the direction of angular velocity even if the body is asymmetric. Let us again consider the circular motion and you have a body here having a velocity out of the board is mv, momentum is mv. Now supposing you took the angular momentum about not about a point O here somewhere but about the center of the circle see what happens. You have basically the r vector is now like this the position vector about c is like this so r cross mv would be above be above. So although this body is asymmetric, the angular momentum of this body is along the axis. That is because the reference point has been chosen as the center of a circle. Coming to a, a thin rod, a thin rod is nothing but several points. It's a collection of several points. So even if the axis were at one end of the rod, let's say the rod were rotating like this, yeah, and you found out the angular momentum of this about the center C, then for every point the angular momentum is going to be along this and the total angular momentum will be in the direction of omega. Thank you.